Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Glory and honor to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is almighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Oh, glory and honor to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is almighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. Oh, the Lord our God, he is wonderful. Hallelujah, God. We thank you right now. We praise you, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor, because you alone are worthy to be praised. Because you're a wonderful God, we lift our voice and we say hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. We say thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for another opportunity to come on the line, oh God, to partake of your presence, Father. Not only to receive, God, but to give you the glory due unto your name. To give you hallelujah, honor, praise and worship in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're on the line and you're in a place where you can be off mute, come on, just lift up the name of the Lord. Come on and give God praise. We owe him praise. Hallelujah. He inhabits the praises of his people. Whatever we need from God, hallelujah, our praise is what releases it into the earth realm in the name of Jesus. It takes faith to praise God. It takes hallelujah, trusting God to give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on and let's worship him. Lift your voice and give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you right now. I praise you, God. Hallelujah. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. And I bless you, God. I bless you, God. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you're just wonderful. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the activity and use of my limbs. I praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, God, for continually making ways out of no way. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for always leading and guiding, hallelujah, for always showing up and showing out, for always, hallelujah, giving correction, direction, instruction, hallelujah, in righteousness, holiness, and sanctification. Father God, we just adore you right now, and we give you all the praise. I decree and I declare right now, hallelujah, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. I decree and I declare right now that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. No matter what we're facing right now, we were not exalted above our God, but hallelujah, we will continually give God praise. Hallelujah. For he said, if he be lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. And I thank you right now that my praise is not just for me, but my praise is causing someone else, hallelujah, to see Jesus, glory to God, high and lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the souls that are being delivered and set free today. I thank you for those that are making up their minds to totally surrender unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God. Oh, my God, for those hallelujah, that are coming out of darkness into 
your marvelous life. I thank you for healing, deliverance, and breakthrough taking place. I thank you for financial release, financial increase. I thank you that we are going from hallelujah, from not enough to more than enough. I thank you, God, that truly, hallelujah, we are the catalyst for which wealth will be transferred. Your kingdom wealth will be transferred in the earth in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you right now. Yes, God, healing is taking place because of our relationship with you. My God, I thank you for supernatural breakthrough in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are not slight concerning your promises as men count slightness, but you are God and you are able to bring all things to pass. Father God, and I pray right now that no one on this line will leave weary. They may have come weary, but I decree and I declare right now, Galatians 6 and 9 over them now, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, that they will not be weary in well-doing. For in due season they will reap if they faint not. Yes, God, and I pray that your people will understand that it's our due season. Hallelujah for all those that have stood the test the time that have stood in obedience hallelujah and righteousness father god that it's our due season glory to god to all those that did not look back glory to god as lot wife did but kept going forward with their eyes fixed on you i decree and i declare that it's our due season and we're gonna reap if we faint not i thank you right now that no one on this line is believing the lies of the enemy for he is the father of lies and there is no truth in him but I thank you Lord God that our eyes are fixed on you our ears are open only to your voice hallelujah and we're standing in your word my God hallelujah that our greater is coming our greater is on the way in Jesus name father God I thank you right now hallelujah that your blood is covering everyone on this line in the mighty matchless name of Jesus and I thank you father God that you are washing us you are cleansing us oh yes God with the washing of the water of the word in Jesus name your word is what purifies your word is what sanctifies and I thank you right now God that we are being filled with your word right now in Jesus name I thank you right now, God, yes, Father, that there's no other place we can go other than to your word to receive what you have for us in Jesus' name. Come on, people of God, and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Open your mouth and give God Hallelujah. praise for he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that we're standing on your word, that every time we come on this line, hallelujah, we're taking away nuggets. We're taking away nuggets that are turning into stones. And on these stones, we're stepping and going higher, higher and higher. We're not coming and losing ground. Hallelujah. We're not coming and receiving the word and then going away and allowing the cares of life to steal what we receive on a daily basis. But we are building something. Yes, God, and I thank you right now that we are building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are building on these stones that are taking us closer into your presence. We can even see the growth, oh God, from day to day from week to week in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that we're not coming, hallelujah, stumbling over the same things over and over again. But I thank you right now that we are growing into mature, hallelujah, sons and daughters in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah. Yes, God, that we are learning, hallelujah, how to war. Yes, God, we are learning how to war. Yes, God, I thank you for teaching, oh, God, our fingers, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. How to fight in our hands on how to war in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you right now that truly we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And we're not moved by the cares of this life in Jesus' name. Father God, but we are fixed. We have our eyes fixed on you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And we bless you, God. We lift you up and we exalt you, Father. Hallelujah. And I praise you right now, God. Yes, God, that no one is falling into condemnation in Jesus' name. For you said in your word that there is therefore now no condemnation to those, oh God, that walk uh, in the spirit and not according to the flesh. In Jesus' name, we are sons and daughters. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And I decree and I declare that we are sons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are sons, and there is no gender in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are sons of the Most High God. And I thank Thank you right now. Yes, God, that we are changing our routines. We are changing our routines. We are no longer doing the same thing, expecting different results. God, but whatever it takes, whatever the sacrifice is, hallelujah, we are doing it in this new. It's a new season, glory to God. It's truly a new day, hallelujah. And I thank you, God, that we are doing things different. No longer do we wait to midday or the end of the day to acknowledge you, but we make the sacrifice and get up early, hallelujah, before dawn to meet with you in the secret place, to set our day in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, hallelujah, that the that the enemy is no longer able to exact his plan over us in Jesus' name. We are seeing a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead of the world being on top of us, we are on top of the world in Jesus' name <clears throat> because we rise up early to seek your faith. We rise up early to give you praise. We rise up early to partake of your word. Father God, I thank you right now. Yes, things are changing. Things are changing in Jesus' name. Things are changing, and the change is starting on the inside of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And it's spreading to every area of our lives in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Yes, it takes sacrifice. All the promises of God are truly yea and amen. Hallelujah. But your adversary, the devil, he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And because we know that the, our adversary, the devil, is always seeking to devour us, we are strategists, glory to God. We are making the changes that need to be made, hallelujah, in order to water to walk in, hallelujah, the power and authority of God in Jesus' name. Father God, we praise you right now, and we give you all the glory. God, I thank you right now, hallelujah, my God, that no one's head is, 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 is hanging down, hallelujah, but our head is up. Uh, upright. Our shoulders are erect. Hallelujah. We have a stand. We have a stand of victory and a conqueror and an overcomer. Why? Because great is he that is in us and he that is in the world. No longer is the enemy able to exact his same uh, 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 plans on our lives. He can just come and knock us down like we are nothing. My God, but he has to fight in order to get to us, glory to God, because you have a hedge of protection around us, glory to God. You have a hedge of protection around us, Father. He just can't walk up to us and do what he want to do. Why? Because we've spent time in the secret place, my God. We have spent that time in your word. Oh, God, our praise has gone to another level. Even our spiritual language is changing, glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything about us is changing. Our understanding of your word, 
hallelujah, it's being enlightened on a daily basis as we partake of your word, and we are understanding clear what the will of the Lord is. Father God, we just glorify you, and we lift you up. I thank you right now, God, for what you're doing, even the more in Prophetess Kali. I pray that you continue to exalt her, hallelujah, that you continue to promote her as she do your bidding in the earth realm, hallelujah, leading your people, oh my God, in holiness and righteousness and sanctification, hallelujah, teaching your people the pure, unadulterated word of God. Father God, we thank you for her entire family and how you are advancing and even promoting, hallelujah, and exalting her husband in the name of Jesus, even her children, God. We thank you, God, that her whole house is blessed. Father God, and I pray right now that even what she see right now, even what you are doing right now is not the half of what you have in store for her. I thank you, God, that her eyes have not seen, their ears have not heard, neither has it entered into their heart the things that you have in store for them because you love them, Father. I thank you right now, God, that you are moving them to a place, oh God, of more than enough, more, more than enough. You are enlarging their territory. I thank you right now, hallelujah, that the prayer of Jabez, hallelujah, is operating in their life, in Jesus' name, more than enough. Their territory is being enlarged. Even her ministry is expanding, hallelujah, even further in the name of Jesus, expanding the globe in Jesus' name, expanding the globe, the ministry, hallelujah, of the Moses household in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you right now, for it is well deserved. It is in order. Hallelujah. It is in order. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, all the honor right now. Father God, I thank you right now, my God, that everyone on this line will walk in their destiny, will walk in their purpose. I thank you no more timidity on this line. Hallelujah. But we will set our face as a plant. Glory to God and do the will of God. We will... Uh, uh, we will lift stand, we will lift up our voice and cry aloud, hallelujah, like a trumpet, glory to God. And we will declare what you say. It is your word. It's not our word. It is your word, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're just your servants. We're just your messengers. And I thank you right now, God, that if the enemy send people after us, it's not us, but it's you that they're warned against. Hallelujah. And we we won't take it personal. I decree and I declare right now that no longer will we walk in offense. That's from the past. No longer will we walk in offense. Glory to God. But we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Oh, God, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, all sorts of spiritual wickedness in high places. So no longer will we look at flesh and blood and get all in our feelings, but we will deal with the spirit and pray for deliverance for the person. In Jesus' name, Father God, I thank you right now. <laughs> Yes, God, that you are opening our understanding. Our understanding, hallelujah, is becoming clear and clear. As we seek your face, God, you are giving us understanding, hallelujah, of why we're facing the things that we're facing, why we have to go the way that we're going. In Jesus' name, Father God, I praise you right now. <clears throat> and I lift you up for you alone are worthy. Father God, I pray right now that your shalom cover all our gates in Jesus' name. Your shalom cover all our gates in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Father. I thank you right now, Father. Hallelujah. That you have made gone before us and made our crooked path straight. So there's no reason for us to fear what's ahead because before we get there, you were already there. In Jesus' name, this is the confidence that we have as your children. Hallelujah, that you won't lead us anywhere, that you are not willing to go with us. <clears throat> and we thank you right now, God, hallelujah, that no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what we think, hallelujah, Father, we are victorious. Hallelujah. Why? Because we serve 
a victorious God. We serve the almighty, most high God. There is no other God but you. There is nobody like you, Father. This is why. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy created other false gods, the liturgy, to try to get us off track. But I thank you, Lord God, that we're not moved by what's happening around us. And I decree and I declare that the saints are seeing into the spirit realm now to understand why things are happening. It looks like there's so, it is so much tragedy, oh God, all around from state to state, from country to country in Jesus' name. But God, we know, we understand that it's the enemy's way to make us feel like like he's winning, but he is not. Those are distractions. Yes, lives are being lost. My God, some are not even saved. But you said in your word that you wish above all that everyone would, would come to repentance. But you even know that everyone is not going to receive you. So souls are being lost. But I decree and I declare right now that everything attached to us win, even though my God, lives are being lost. The enemy is using those things to get us off track. But, Father, we know that it's a setup. You're setting him up to be for your glory. You're setting him up for your glory to be revealed in this earth in these last and evil days. We must understand that we're in the end time. The, the enemy is trying to get as many as he can directly and indirectly. He's after us indirectly, trying to influence us through our emotions. But he's a lying wonder. He would not prevail. He is a lie and the father of lies. He would not prevail, for we are not moved by what we see, hear, feel, or think. But we move in faith, knowing that you win, and we win because we're on the Lord's side. Father, we just bless you and we praise you right now. And we thank you and give you all the glory for you alone are worth. I thank you that you said in your word in Hebrews that there is a rest for the people of God. And I thank you that we're coming to rest. We're coming to rest. And we're no longer threatened. We're no longer fearful. We're no longer being moved by what the enemy is doing. But he is doing what he's supposed to do. My God, he's doing what he's supposed to do. And we too will be about our father's business. My God, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you right now. In Jesus' matchless name, to him be all glory dominion and power forever and ever. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. For he is worthy. 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 To be you, praised, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He Thank you, Lord. is worthy. He is worthy, is worthy to worthy. be worthy. praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, people. Come on, people of God. We got to understand that nothing that's happening is a surprise to God. Yes. He is not surprised. Yes. He knows all things. Yes. He knows all things. He's not yes. moved by anything that's happening. Mm -hmm. And we can't Amen. be moved. We can't be moved. Right. If, if, if the things that we see does anything for us, it should push us to prayer. It should push us to a greater devotion to God. <laughs> if it does anything for us, it should push us to greater devotion in God. That's all. Not away from God, but 
should put us in hot, hot pursuit of God. Everything that's going on in this world, I'm in New York, and right over from, uh, not far from the hospital I'm working, the, the building that burned and the lives that were lost. My God. My that God. should push that should push us closer to God. Yes. Then in uh I believe it was Brazil where the 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 the, the what the cliff just fell down on the people. Yes. yes. The lives yes. that are lost. But we can't be moved by these things. Why? Because we're Amen. in the last days. Day. I was yes. just laying up here meditating. Holy Spirit say the enemy is trying to wear the people, my sons and daughters out. He's trying to wear my children out by all the tragedy that's going on. But we cannot be moved. He Amen. is not winning. He's Amen. using the power of of persuasion. He's trying to persuade us that he's winning by all the tragedy. And then he's trying to move the people of God to think that it's him, that it's God that's doing all this. We know this we know this is not the work of our father. This, this is not the work of our father. This is the work yes. of the enemy. Yes. This is the work of the enemy. Yes. But he's trying to convince everybody that it's a work of him, and it's not. It's not. So if he can convince us that it's him, who are we going to run to? Just think about it. We know he's a God of wrath. We understand that. We know he's a God of judgment. But at the same time, it's not him. When it, he said the wages of sin is death. When we're not doing what we're supposed to, it's not. It, 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 God just uh, 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 moves his hand. And when his hand is moved, who got the legal right to come in? The enemy, the adversary, the devil. What keeps him away from us is our obedience to God. But even in that, we know, and look at the word of God, the enemy could not get to Job because why? He was a perfect and upright man, and he eschewed me. He ran from evil. So in order for the enemy to even touch Job's house, God had to lower the hedge. But still, was it God that killed Job's children, or was it the enemy that did it? It was the enemy that did it. Because he told God, I bet if you lower that hedge, I can get Job to curse you to your face. And he's saying the same thing about you. Don't you think he don't went to God on you? Why Why you think you're going through what you're going through? He is going to God on you. And say, I bet if, I, I bet if you let me do this to him, they'll turn their back on you. My he thinks God. you just that he thinks you just that fickle. He thinks you only serving God for his hand. The devil don't believe that you love God. Do you understand that? He does not believe that you truly love God. He thinks you're only here for what you can get from God's hand. He don't believe you. He don't believe me. I know he's gone to God on me. And he's been defeated every time. He's been proven to be a liar every time. Why? Because he ain't nothing but a lie. God has put things down in you 
that you don't even know. This is why when you should have fell out, when you should have just disappeared, you don't even know how you made it through. You don't even know how you still stand. But it's because of what God put down on the inside of you. My God, you think God just sent you here to this earth realm with nothing in you? You just empty? Everything that you're supposed to do and be in this life, he put it in you before he sent you and put you in your mother's womb. This is why he keeps, he works to keep us from spending time in the secret place. He don't want you to know your God. He don't want you to know who you are. And when we don't know what's all on the inside of us, we walk around in defeat. We walk around like a victim instead of the victor. We walk around like we done been conquered instead of the conqueror. But I decree and I declare today that we're going to know who we are. We're going to pursue God so much in this before this month ends that we're going to come out with a revelation about our own self. And our whole mindset is changing. Mm-hmm. And we taking dominion the rest of this year. The, for, till Jesus come back for the rest of the time that we got here because we're not letting go we're not going back we're taking dominion and walking in authority like God predestined and ordained us to we're going to know who we are We're going to start speaking into other people's lives and watching it come to pass. We're going to decree a thing and watch it manifest right in front of our eyes. My God. God already placed healing down on the inside of you. We're going to speak to cancer and watch it dry up. We're going to command tumors to, 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 to fall. We're going to command them to come up and out and we're going to see them fall. Because why? We're going to spend that time with God to know our God and to know who we are. You're powerful. You're victorious. You're a conqueror. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No longer will we quote the scriptures and not believe it. But we're going to say them with authority. And it's not even how loud we say it. But when we say it, we're saying it because we know it. Don't you know everything that you went through? was to bring you to a place of knowing. How do I know he's a provider? Because he's provided. How do I know he's a way maker and a miracle worker? Because he's, he's made ways and he's performed miracles. So, so when I say it, there's power and authority behind it. Oh, my God. I'm not timid. I'm not shy. I ain't scared. Because whatever I say, I know that he can do it. Why? Because I allowed him to be that in my life. I don't want to just read the word to quote the scripture. But I want that word to be walked out in my life. So that when I say, they say well, how you know he's a healer? Because he's healed me. Well, how you know he's a deliverer? Because he's delivered me, and he's yet delivering me. We serve an awesome God, and he's worthy to be praised. And
and ain't nobody mad but the devil. Nobody. Give God praise just one more time. Give him some praise. Give him some praise as we transition into announcement. Amen. I'm telling you, God got great things in store for us. Great, great, and mighty things in store for us. Amen. I don't know if you all saw it, but Prophetess Kimberly <clears throat> was interviewed uh, interviewed on a, um, a radio uh, station this morning, and... Uh, if you can go back, if she was interviewed by a Gentleman Style Podcast, God, Family, Finance, and Self, um, and it, I saw it this morning, but it was, uh, I believe it was done yesterday. So if you go to her page, you'll be able to find that. Also, remember uh, the weekly prayer calls. Uh, Tongues of Fire at 6, 6 a.m., Noonday Prayer, 12, same number, and call. Also, remember, Saints of God, if you want to get in on the next book collaboration, the uh, the last day to get in on that would be February the 1st, February the 1st. So if you want to be a part of the um, um, book collaboration, uh, get go to Prophetess Kimberly's page to sign up for that. If you have any questions, you can reach out to her, and she will answer them uh, and help you uh, with that. Also, um, remember the Wednesday night um, service call where whoever God lays on a heart goes forth and uh, in the word, in, in, in the giftings on a live, and uh, however God moves, if you want to um, uh, be a part of that on Wednesday night, just call back in. Same line and code. I uh, believe it was Prophetess Richardson last Wednesday, and it was awesome. It was phenomenal. That truly blessed my whole life. Amen. So if you want to be a part of, uh, be in on that, just tune in on Wednesday night. Amen, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember, everything is Eastern Standard Time. Also, uh, she has her YouTube channel where you can come in and join on three different levels. Uh, She has all kind of information on there, teaching on the prophets. If you've been called Mm -hmm. to the prophetic, or just being a child of God, you want to know about the prophet. Maybe you find you uh, through those videos, you'll find uh, uh, some of the things that God has for your life just by listening to that. Maybe things you heard things and didn't really understand it, and through that teaching, you'll get understanding. So uh, come in on di- different levels. Uh, the 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 she has three tiers that you can come in on. Whatever you can afford at this time, do that. Also, you can be a supporter of her Facebook page, uh, monthly support. Uh, on that, you can go to her Facebook page and sign up for that to be a supporter. Her ministry page, you can be a monthly supporter to her ministry where you set it up and, and uh, 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 it'll come out automatically every month to support her ministry. Uh, you can support her YouTube channel by uh, subscribing <clears throat> and also sending uh, stars. Sending stars support her ministry page, as uh, her YouTube page as well. Also, um, she has her Keeping It Spicy. Um, and it's really, it really be spicy. It, it, it's the way she does the teaching is for married people. Uh, people uh, are wanting to be married, and people that are engaged, people that are single, people that maybe think they don't want to be married. Uh, tune in for her keeping it spicy, and that comes on her YouTube page. So if you have not yet uh, liked or uh, subscribed to her YouTube channel, 
go and subscribe to her YouTube channel because you need to, you want to be in the know on everything that's going on. You want to know everything that's going on. So at this time, um, also, y'all know she has books out. And, oh, and if you have not gone to her uh, Facebook page and liked her page and following her page, please do so. That's one of the ways to keep up with everything that's going on because she has a lot going on. Amen. That's helping uh, build the the body of Christ. And one of the books that was uh, being promoted today, I believe uh, Prophet Sandra Ross posted it and Prophet shared it by checking out her new book, The Preacher's Handbook. <clears throat> the Preacher's Handbook, a sermon book. Mm-hmm. And uh, Prophet is called it a journal. Um, so go check that. Just go check out everything. And if you think mm-hmm. it's something that will benefit you, partake of it. Amen. God bless. Uh, and we thank him for the announcement. At this time, we're going to transition into testimonies. If you have a testimony on something God has done for you, please feel free I have a testimony. to uh, share your testimony. Amen. Who is that? This is um, Shalona. Um, God bless, bless you. I was, God bless you. I was blessed by the word today. And some of the things that you spoke were some of the things that I, I tell my kids um, all the time about the enemy and how he uh, operates. And my grandson, even though he's young, I said, you know, I said, you get tried young, you need to know how to war young. So I tell him that all the time. But um, my testimony is um, Prophetess Kay had spoken um, yesterday, and she was saying that somebody had problems with their right elbow. And Sunday, I was in the ER like for five hours. And I didn't know what was wrong with my elbow. Um, I couldn't straighten it out, and it wouldn't, you know, it just wasn't right. And I didn't, and I didn't remember hitting it or nothing, doing nothing to it. So they did X-rays and everything Sunday. And the whole while they had me there for like five hours. I praised and worshiped God, and I was just sitting there talking to the Holy Spirit. And I was like, Holy Spirit, I want to sing this one song, but I, I can't get the beat right. So then, you know, I would hear him play the beat. And so when the beat started playing, I started. <coughs> So the whole while I'm now praising the worship, and so they came back and they told me that it was broken, and it was like, well, do you know what happened? Do you know how it was? But I said, no, I don't know anything. Um, so they put me in the sling or whatever, and I, I, I continued to praise and worship God. I even praised and worship even after that. So um, I went home, and the next day when Prophet K said someone has someone with a right elbow, and God said he, he's healing you. You know, I woke up this morning, and they, you know, they tell me how long it take this something to heal, but. That's what they say. Uh, I know what God says. So he said he's going to heal me. That's what he's going to do. So I woke up this morning, and um, previously it was swollen and everything, and um, I was able to actually move it and everything. So uh, I know God's doing what he said he's going to do, and I'm just so thankful uh, for it, and that's my testimony. Amen. 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 So you, you stand Praise in God. that. You stand, God said it's healed. It's healed. Yes. When yeah, is he healed when God yeah. said it? Amen. Exactly. See, yeah. see cool. God, he'll tell us in the spirit. He'll show us what his will is. Yes. And it may take time for it to manifest mm. in the natural. But what he letting you know, that it's a done deal. You're not going to yeah. have to worry with that no more. Yes. And Amen. Like, whatever whatever it is, you're, you're not going to have to worry with it yes. anymore. Why? Because yes. heaven has spoken already. And you yes. stand in that, you good. Yes. You yes. good. And the natural has to catch up with the supernatural. Come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyone yes. else with a testimony? Yeah, hello, this is Lakeisha. Hi, Lakeisha. Hi. Um, my testimony is um, the other day, I'm going to be honest and transparent, I was pulled over for driving with a suspended license. And um, I started to panic because I had bought my car last summer, and um, I was never, like, pulled over by the cops or anything like that. Um, I can't really physically work because I have, like, heart failure, so I had decided to do Ubers or whatever, Uber delivery. And for the, the past um, 
whole year, like, I've been protecting, like, God has, like, protected me, but I just started doing a delivery um, two or three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. Um, I bought the car because uh, when I walk, like, long distances, I have, I get short of breath and things of that nature, and the doctor was um, requesting for me not to walk, you know, as possible. So I bought the car to get around because I can't uh, depend on anyone else, and, you know, I am basically have myself. So anyway, I got pulled over yesterday, and I started to panic, and I just started praying, like, right then and there because I knew that um, from previous years I had got a whole bunch of tickets for driving around with um, no insurance and things of that nature. And that's a long story within itself. <laughs> and um, God had came through. So the cop basically was like, hey, I'm not going to tow your car and I'm not going to arrest you, but I am going to give you a citation. So even with the citation, I, I started panicking with that. I started looking it up. I'm like, oh, my God, I might be going to jail. You know, I had this dream that I had went to jail a while back. And um, I just, you know, started filling myself up with ideas. So I had called in the court, and I was like, hi, I'm being honest. And I was pulled over, you know, with a suspended license. And I wanted to know, do I have to come in to see a judge? Or, you know, do I have to just pay this ticket? The cop told me that I would have to go in to see a judge. And the lady was like, no, 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 you don't have to see a judge. You just pay the ticket. If you want to plead my guilty, then you'll see a judge. You just pay the ticket, and that's it. So I'm just so grateful. So um, my license suspension lifts in 10 more days. So I'm trying to hold out without driving for 10 more days so I can, you know, restore my license. So um, the fee for the ticket was $100, and I just started kind of crying. I was like, God, you know I don't really want to be driving around with no, you know, like on a suspended license, but I don't have any help. I don't have any financial help. I don't have anyone that's really going to be there for me. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I need your help. Like, I need your help. And then I owed the bank, and I got into a four o'clock deadline to pay this. So when I had went into my um, bank account about 10, 20 minutes ago, um, I was asking God to protect me as I, you know, finished doing deliveries to get the money that I owed them. They took $37 off of what I owed them, which brought it down to $50. So I didn't even have to do any more deliveries. And I have extra money for my daughter for her birthday. And I was like, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Because driving around when you're not supposed to be doing something, you're not supposed to be doing, you know, it's not a good feeling. So I was just so grateful that I could just drop what I was doing and head home. <laughs> So I'm just thankful that you came, came through again. Amen. 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 He, you know, God protects us even when it seems like uh, we don't have nobody. But when we go to him and tell him, you all I got, he always come through. Always. Amen. You be encouraged, young lady. Because Thank you. God has some great things in store for you, and you better believe your uh, best is yet to come. And, and uh, everything that you're going through right now is for a greater testimony. See, you're going to be able to tell other young women how to come over, how God brought you over and brought you out. See, uh, yeah. uh, this is the thing. The world has told women that they got to be strippers, they got to be borderline <laughs> prostitutes, right. they got to be, yeah. they got to be, they got to have a sugar daddy, they got to Amen. give up everything, uh, give up their dignity, who they are, <clears throat> just to survive in That's this cruel true. world. But the devil is a liar. Yeah. God a needs liar. us yeah. women to that trust him and depend on him. So he can bring us out. And we said, no, boo, you can keep your clothes on. You can yet be holy. Yeah. And God will bring you yeah. through. Amen. Amen. You, you, you Amen. see? Because when yeah. God bring you to, uh, 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 when he bring you to marriage, it's not going to be, oh, God, thank you. I got this man. Now I can pay my light bill. No, boo, he was paying it before you came. <laughs> right, so yeah. you need to know. And, and guess what? He sets us up so we'll never fail. He paid the bill mm-hmm. before you before you got the man. And just in case the man mm-hmm. nut up, because sometimes they do, he'll pay it after you, mm-hmm. you, you know, right. uh, whatever. Right. So uh, bottom line, I'm secure. I'm not insecure. I'm secure. We mm-hmm. get our security 
and our identity from our Father. Even mm-hmm. if you don't know your natural father, you get it from your heavenly father. So you mm-hmm. never under you never demean yourself. You never sell yourself short. Because why? Mm-hmm. I know I got my identity from my daddy. Therefore, I ain't got to sell my body for nothing. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can have the best of the best. You mm-hmm. look at other people strutting, uh, uh, Louis Vuitton. Fendi and 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 uh, uh uh Armani and all that you can have that too. <laughs> God will position you to get it, and it yeah. won't get you. See, when you do anything mm-hmm. to get it, it got you. But just trusting God and He give it to you, you will have it. It won't have you. It's just the bag. Oh, mm-hmm. this whole thing. Oh, oh yeah, it's nice. I thank God for it, but it don't have me. Right. And God is positioning you so that you can share with other young women his power to thank bring God. you up and out. Change your status Amen. before your status change. That's Amen. what he do. He's that powerful. I'm telling you. Yeah. So you hold your head up. You okay. walk like you already there. Fix your mind okay. to think higher. Whenever you going through, yeah, say it ain't gonna always be like this. Because yeah. God said, it, th- th- "I'm just going through, so I can help somebody else cross." Yeah. So you 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 hold your head up because God got great plans for you, and He's gonna blow Thank your you mind. <laughs> yes, He is. He's gonna blow your mind. My God. You, God. Anyone else with a testimony? After this, TJ. God bless you. Um, God bless you too. This is Carmel. Um, I was just listening to her. You talk to her, but um, it seems like um, I know God has been good to me, and He's always coming through for me. But um, it seems like the enemy wants to uh, come in and try to attack me, like like if He do something big for me, and then once it's done, I'll be before I complete doing whatever He want me to do. I'll be afraid um, to go ahead and um, do it. I'll be like, Lord, but I, I think about, well, what are you going to have some money left over? And I was just thinking as you was talking to her, you know, because um, by my mother not being here and my father, he don't really help me like um, how my mother used to help me. And um, when I got on first got on this line, I was going really going through because, I didn't have anybody. Um, I felt like I didn't have nobody I could go to and ask um, to get help from. And um, my son, I was always helping him, but um, that is one of my biggest fears that I'm, um, and you were talking today, there's some things that you said. um, It just really blessed me, um, but I'm learning how to um, to not be fearful, and that's the, my thing. I don't want to be fearful in um, once God do something, the devil to allow him to come in and play with my mind, like, oh, you're not going to get anything else. That's the thought. But um, I know that God is good, and he will bring you through. Um, like you said, the enemy wants to come in and attack us, but we just got to keep um, our mind trusting in God. And I just thank you for everything you were saying today. It it really, you know, like I said, every time I'm on this line, I'm always um, just blessed because it's just always something, even if it's not right then or, or later on in the day, God will give me a word. Um, and I'm just thankful that you all guys be, you know, do what God asks you to do. You do it just the way he wants you to do it. And it's just a blessing. And every time I, I, um, I hear you talk, 
it seems like when I first got on this line, you, you made me feel like um, a grandmother for me, like a motherly, grandmotherly um, when I really needed it. And you were always pushing me, always telling me, God got you, God got you. And you just really helped me at a time I was really going through. And I just want to thank you for you being obedient to the Lord. Amen. And let me let you let me let you in on the secret. But you the rest of y'all on the line can listen to. God bless you one time. That don't bankrupt heaven. Heaven got an endless supply. The supply in heaven is endless. Heaven will never go. Only the world system have to start making more money. <laughs> Amen. Heaven don't have to do that because the supply is endless. We just have to tap into it. We we just have to tap into it. And and understand this. It is impossible to listen to the voice of the enemy when I'm talking to my God, when I'm praising, when I'm worshiping. I can't hear two people at the same time. Have you ever had two children trying to talk to you at the same time? What you say? Now, listen here. Y'all got to talk one at a time because I can't hear what both of y'all saying at the same time. So it's the same way with God. When I'm praising God, you keep going, you're going to elevate yourself above the voice of the enemy. He's limited. He can only go so far he cannot stand the presence of God. He cannot stand it. So when he comes to tell me a lie, I, I just begin to quote the truth. Heaven's supply is endless. My father own cattle on a, a thousand hills. I'm, I, I ain't even conquered hill one yet. <clears throat> he has more than enough. His supply never runs out. Amen. He has everything I need and then some. It doesn't matter if if I look to the right, there's nobody there. If I look to the left, there's nobody there. If I look behind me, there's nobody there. So therefore, I keep my eyes looking to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I'm not looking for man. No longer am I looking for man <clears throat> to be my source of supply. But I'm looking to my father. Why? Because I'm a big girl now. <clears throat> and he supplies what I need, even if it comes through a person. It's because I went to him and he went to them. Amen. He's, he, he's teaching you how to do things different. He's teaching you how, how to tap in. To, the, uh, to heaven's supply. He's teaching you how to depend on him okay. so you will never be disappointed or let down again. Amen. Thank you. Man is always limited. Man can never do what God can do. Never. So for what he has, in store for you, he has to take you this way to where you let go of, I would say, any little safety net right. that you may have had and go for broke, just you and God. Because I know I tell God, I say, when my light bill was due, before I moved to Florida, my light bill was due. I didn't have the money. I say, God, either you pay it or we're going to sit here in the dark. I say, because I'm not asking nobody. You're the source of my supply. The man called me. He said, you on my list for your lights to be turned off. He said, I don't want to do it because you got kids and 
and the weather is changing. He say, uh, uh, can you, if you just pay this, I think it was $20 some dollars, I, I, I won't come turn them off. Pay it by this time. I, I still didn't have it. So he had no choice but to turn mm-hmm. the lights off. But God was taking me somewhere. He was taking me somewhere, saying. So me and my kids, we, uh, uh, when I would go to work at night, I would leave them at somebody's house because God told me, he said, you got to use wisdom. He said, because the enemy would tell them to light a candle or do something. He said, the enemy is working to destroy your testimony. He said, imagine what people would say about that. So I would take them to somebody's house so they would be okay while I'm working. But when I wasn't working, we'd be at home together. We would still come together at night and do our family devotion and prayer and word. And then we'd go to bed. And my prayer would be, God, wrap your arms around this house and keep us warm. And he did just that. And when I got the money, I paid the light bill. And the light, and we got the light. But we sat up in that. We stayed in that house for nine days with no light, because I decided that I was stepping out of the boat, and I was going to walk on water, walk in my faith to trust God to do what needed to be done. So guess what? The devil know lights on, lights off. I'm still going to give God praise. I never sit there and say, oh, well, God, why you didn't move? Why you didn't move before this? Why? No, when he moved, it was right on time. Because, see, somebody needs to know, look, honey, you may have to have your lights off one time. You may have to go through something sometime, but it won't be all the time. Mm-hmm. Guess what? They ain't been off since. Amen. So whatever we go through, and in some, because some people, they would just fall out. They would just pass completely out. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Somebody, you'd be calling uh, a spiritual 911 for somebody to come get them because they just done passed over. Yes. Was I a child of God? Yes. But even as children of God, we are called to go through some things. So we can help other people to cross. If we never go through anything, Andre Kraut say, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I would never know what faith in God could do. So when I say through it all, through it all, I truly learn to trust in Jesus. I learn to trust in God. Through it all, I learned what faith in God could do. And and faith in God, it moves mountains. It calls walls to fall. And with his power, he performed Mm. miracles. There is nothing that's impossible, and I'm standing here only because he made a way. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He's always looking mm. for somebody that he can display his power through. Mm. Always. Hallelujah. Anyone else with a testimony before we transition into prayer? Yes, I have a testimony. God um, bless you. Shemika, bless you too, woman of God. Um, and I thank you for everything that was said today. It really blessed me as well. Um, I just want to say yesterday um, I had um, some spiritual warfare on the job. been going through it anyway. And so it caused me to get off work early, in which I wanted prayer for it yesterday, but I guess God stopped it, you know. He wanted me to pray myself, you know. Um, so just going through on the job, um, 
I almost had to slap somebody and everything. The girl was, you know, it was a long situation, but I'm not going to get all into it. But in the end, the girl was like, she just shut up, just shut up. And I'm like, you know, the, <laughs> I don't know if it's the black Indian side of me or the devil just rose up, and I'm like, I'm off the clock now, so tell me to shut up again. So my spirit told me, you know, won't need to hit her or nothing like that. You know, I said, you know what? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and I bind you up by the power of the Holy Ghost. And that was it. And so when I left us out of there or whatever, I was still raised up and stuff, and I got on call, and I was like, I need prayer for this, you know. And then prophecies was like, I need to save my energy, you know. So it just gave me more strength to go to God myself with it, you know, and I just prayed and I prayed and I praised and everything, got on my knees more and just gave it to God and all. And so this morning when I went to work, everybody thought that I won't, you know, coming back to work or whatever, so they were shocked this morning, you know. And I'm like, hello, good morning, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like David and the lion's den, God shut the mouths of the enemy you know, against me because I was not in the wrong over the situation that happened. But it just made me mad. And, you know, when a Christian person get mad, you know, everybody seemed to look at them as the bad person and, you know, this and that to the third. And so that's what everybody was doing. And, you know, everybody seemed like they was up against me. And so, like you said, once four, one can chase a um, 10,000, two, once to chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. And so it's like, God, he was on my side, and I thank him for that. You know, I even tried to, I was like, I'm not going back to that job. You know, I can get more jobs. I had called it. You know, it was like people was like, "We, you come in tomorrow. We'll hire you on the spot. And this, I was like, God, I'm going. But he didn't want me to do that. He wanted me to stay right where I was. And like I said, when I went in this morning, you know, he shut the mouths of the enemy. You know, and I was just praising. I was the only one in there happy and praising around. You know, they were snickering to themselves and, you know, everybody in the crowd talking to themselves and all. But in the end, when my truth came mm-hmm. out to the person that wasn't there yesterday, they hadn't told them another whole story. And she said, uh-huh, they ain't tell me all that, you know. And so she was like, so you was right, you know, the, the um, one that was talking to me. And so I went on break or whatever. And God blessed me at my second job to pick I was supposed to have been off tomorrow, but he blessed me to pick up a shift, which I work less than hours than I'm able to because I serve, I'm able to make more money. You know, he blessed me back of what I lost yesterday. And so I was like, thank you, God. You know, he sent me a blessing to let me know I wasn't wrong. And by I gave it to him, you know, he was on my side. So I just, you know, encouraged somebody that, you know, just give it to God. Don't retaliate in your own. You know, the enemy is coming up against me really hard and us as Christians really hard, but he is not, he cannot win against God. And God showed me that right before their face and now all them sitting there mad, you know. And so I was able to leave early today because I saw that, you know, um, they were slow. And, you know, I used to be managing and stuff, so I understand, you know, you got to save labor and stuff. So when I spoke out about it, she was like, okay, but I still get to go back at 2 o'clock if I want to go back and work, you know, after the next shift grade to start or whatever. But I was thankful that I was able to get on this prayer call to be able to tell that because God is good and he is faithful and he's going to rain on the just as well as the unjust, but he got our back. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And and Shamika, when you were saying that uh, God was on my side, I, I heard Holy Spirit say, "I've I'm always I've always been on her side." He's Amen. Been, thank you, Lord. Side. He's always been on your side. So thank you, let Lord. Me tell you, so yesterday I had a situation as well, and it was a, a young nurse. What I say still wet behind the ears. I've been nursing about as long as she's been alive. Mm-hmm. And then she's going to challenge me in front of everybody on the floor. Like she knew what she was. I say, honey, everything that you said, I've already done. And then she's going to walk off mumbling. Yeah. <laughs> and see, I, I, but I told God, this is what I told. I say, God, I'm not going to be acting up. I say, I'm not going to be getting upset with people. 
I say I'm not going to be uh, wanting to fight folks. I say, and 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 let me let me help somebody out. When you get angry, so okay. When I've never been a cusser, but I know how to cuss. Right. So, and, and just because you get saved and delivered from cussing, don't mean you forgot how to cuss. Amen. Okay. So when you get angry, the first thing that want to come to your mind is the cussing fight. Okay. Right. Well, maybe that's just for me. But anyway, so the enemy wanted to use my mind as a playground. To You should have said this. You should have said, I right, say, devil right. is a lie. I say, now, I done been fasting and praying, and you think I'm going to let you take me out like this? I say, that mm-hmm. just let me know that God got something good for me. Then he comes, That's well, what you I need said. To, you, you, <laughs> need to, you need to just... You need to just say, forget this and go on home. I say, so you think I'm going to leave my money? That it ain't going to take no money away from her because she's trying to work everything, she, every shift she can. If she works seven days a week, if they let her do it, she would because she really after the money. So I say, I, and, and Holy Spirit say, first of all, you know that you did with, right by your patient. You should have never engaged her in conversation because she's a child. She don't know what she's talking about. Yeah. Then she's trying to act like the doctor. They didn't even know what they was doing. But anyway, he said you should have never engaged her. So after uh, work, we had to ride together. So it's like, okay, she asked me something, I answer. But other than that, you know what? I'm I'm going to put you in another file. I'm going to still do as much as I can for you. But now that I know what you're capable of, then I know how to deal with you. I can walk in wisdom, you know, towards you because you want to be great. I'm not trying to be great. I'm already great because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So I'm already great. Mm-hmm. I don't have to try to prove nothing to nobody. But, the, the, I mean, the enemy came because he wanted me, when we got on that elevator, he wanted me to jack her up. I say, but I ain't going to do it. I say, nah. So that tells me that you want me to miss what I done been warned for all this time. It ain't going to happen. It, mm-hmm. it, I just can't happened. do it. Yeah. I, I, just, I just can't give in to it. And, and I'm not going to give in to it. So, <clears throat> um I say, God, I thank you for the victory. But we got to understand that any time you make up in your mind that you're going hard for the Lord, the enemy going to come. He may not come for you on the first day, second day, third day. Honey, if he got to wait till day 10, he will. He yeah. won't wait till you good and tired. And I was good and tired yesterday. <laughs> I was good and tired. And I ain't have no patience for nonsense. Amen. <laughs> but God is working on me with patience too. He's working on me with that. You know, you you don't just act any old kind of way because I'll be, you know, and and then sometimes you don't have to say curse words to 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 let people know that you know what this ain't the road you want to walk. But Amen. God is teaching me not to even do that. Not to even do that. Because I'm like, right. God, just help me to walk in love with God. And so he say, okay, l- let me have her act crazy. Let let me let the devil make her act crazy. Because, you know, he can use her any time. She is. But I was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, they, they want us to cut up. But God will bring us to the place that they can't even make us angry no more. I know that's right. So Amen. He's, he's for you whenever they act up. He say he's always for you. He ain't just Amen. got for you. He's been for you. So just Amen. hold on to that. And when they tripping, let them go on the trip by themselves. Don't go yeah. with them. Because <laughs> the enemy is trying to keep you from what God has for you. And I don't know yeah. what you may have prayed and asked him for as far as in the uh, uh, work field or, or whatever, but just know that it's already approved in heaven. And, and your your step, the steps that you're taking now, is going to cause it to manifest 
uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, in the earth realm for you. And the enemy is using these people, the devil is using these people to try to stop you. But at the same and block you, but at the same time, God is using them to push you to your expected end. Thank you, Lord. God and the devil both are working. Yes. And God always uses what the devil does to get us where we need to be. Amen. And that's what I said. I said. The devil just let me know I got a big old blessing coming from somewhere because he coming at me hard, boy. Woo. <laughs> but, yeah, just so, fight, fight. When you fight, fight the good fight of faith. Don't don't amen. fight with your fears. Fight the right. good fight of faith. Because yes, I, I, like, I, I was wanting to throw hands, too. Yes. But I'm trying, I'm trying to save my hand for laying hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So yeah, the end, he's gonna always come. Trust. He's gonna try you. He's gonna try. He still you. tried me yesterday. It's been a while, but he tried me yesterday, and I had to catch. You know, I listened to the spirit, and I just, you know, went on and just left. You know, but God, He gave it back to me. Like I said tomorrow with my other job, and I said, "Thank you, Lord." You know, because I wasn't in the wrong. But I should have stayed there and not left, so that gave me, you know, more insight. Don't leave, you know, just stay there, you know. Right. See, that's what I'm saying. He's going to teach you how not to even let them push you to that point. No, you won't be angry. You will deal with the spirit and not look at it like the person. It's it's a spirit. Yes. Amen. It, it's a spirit. Thank you so, so you will learn to deal with the spirit. And 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 pray for the person. Amen. I'll tell you, I was hotter than uh, <laughs> uh, uh, two two scorpions uh, in the Georgia sun. But um, <laughs> and and the Lord just let me know that uh, um, um, you know, I gotta, you know, be watchful, stay watchful. And understand, you know, what the enemy is trying to do. What I asked God to do, the enemy heard me. So it's his job to try to keep me from receiving. And right. and I decree and I declare that just as God did for me, I no longer have to work two or three jobs, uh, but one job is more than enough. And I decree and I declare that God will do the same thing for you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Just stay in, stay in faith, stay in obedience, and watch God move because he, he does have something good for you. And when you say about your second job, I say, uh, there it is. He's going to bless you and position. He's blessing and positioning you for one job. You never know who's watching you. And you can't even look at your education or your qualifications. When God opened the door, he qualifies you. So don't even look at what you may not have. Just your obedience to God is what's going to open this door. Your willingness to allow God to shine through you is opening this door where he's positioning you where one will be more than enough. He will bless you through one that it will be more than you had with the two or even with three. He'll bless you to the point that you are able to be able to bless others. He'll position you where you'll be able to cause others to come in and come out. Amen. Because you will be a fair person. You will listen to God and not listen to the enemy. You will give people the same opportunity that God gave you in Jesus' name. So you understand that this right here, this right here is to get you where you're supposed to be. You never know who's watching you and looking for somebody just like you that can allow God to shine through them. Deal with difficult people, but yet stay in, in the right frame of mind and stay in love. Watch you, God work for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Bless you, woman of God. May God bless, God bless you, you and keep you as well. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to transition to prayer. If anyone needs prayer, please come forth at this time. 
Kaya's pizza, my friends. Um, I need prayer because I have a um, court case coming up, a federal court case coming up. It's something that my son's father did. And I had gotten, con- well, I had reached out to a, um, I think it's called a pro bono lawyer, but they have never contacted me. And, you know, that's this week. So I just want to, um, I guess, touch and agree that someone will reach out to me. When you go to court? Uh, January 14th. And nobody's reached out to you? Mm-mm. Okay. So I'm reminded of a testimony of a young lady that uh, um, this big company was coming up against her because somebody mm-hmm. lied on her and she had mm-hmm. to go to court. She had to go to court and she couldn't afford mm-hmm. a lawyer. Mm-hmm. So God showed up in the courtroom and moved on mm-hmm. her behalf. And, and, okay. and they had to drop all the charges because he, when he moved, uh-huh. he moved in her favor. Mm-hmm. So I pray in Jesus' name that the will of the Lord be done for you and that he work on your behalf just as he did for this young lady. And, Father, if it be your will that someone, uh, you, if you desire to work through uh, a man or a woman, as far as a lawyer, I pray that you touch their heart now, that they will contact her ahead of time and, and, and war on her behalf. And, God, even if you don't, I say as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, it's not because you can't, but, God, that means you have another way that that you want to do it. You want to show her how you fight for her in Jesus' name. And, Father, I pray right now, hallelujah, that as she go through these things and and how you are uh, working to bring her from the pains of her past, God, that she will see you in such a, a, a loving way of how you are working on her behalf that she will never, ever find herself caught up in the things of the past or, or even uh, new things in the future in Jesus' name. But she will hold to you like never before in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I praise you and I give mm-hmm. you the glory because you truly know how to be a lawyer in the courtroom. And we thank you right now that it's done. You, you are already there working in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Mm-hmm. Just trust and believe that he did not bring you this far to leave you, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is moving on your behalf. Glory to God. It's already done. Just trust him. Just trust him. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. It may seem big and bad, but God is bigger and he's greater. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. God bless you. Um, God bless you, too. My prayer request is for my mother and I's relationship. I'm sorry, this is Brittany. And it's strained. And I I just need wisdom from God on how to go about it. Um, you know, I was in foster care and juvenile justice system for some time. In her mind, she believes she raised me. And if I don't do things her way, she won't, like, support me with my children. Like, I pay my mom to watch my children. Recently, I was supposed to go house shopping, but because I don't raise my children the way she wants me to raise them, she decided not to watch them. So now it's like, all right, it's really just me and my children. And I'm trying to move, trying to go back to school. And it's just like this support system, like the closer I get to God, the more my relationship with my mom becomes even more strange. So I, I just need um, 
wisdom and God's peace about the situation. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God, you are worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we praise you and we give you all the glory. God, I come lifting up Brittany's request on wisdom on how to uh, go in and out with her mother in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, God. Thank you, Father. So, Brittany, let me ask you this. Um, and and I want you to think about it for a second. Don't be quick to to answer. But with the with the way you were brought up, being in the foster system and all that, can you say that you have fully forgiven your mom for whatever you had to go through? I mean, and when I say that. When she act up or whatever, put like she's putting motherly demands on you, does it ever cross your mind? Well, you didn't raise me no way. You know, me, you ain't even got a right to say it. I was in foster care. You didn't even do what you're supposed to do. Can you say that you've fully forgiven her? Mm, I believe for that part, I think, I guess no, because it's, it's, it's like, in my mind, I feel like I forgive her, but then it's just like, okay, there's something else, something else, something else. Like, for example, when I went house, when I was supposed to go house shopping, um, I don't like leaving my children in there crying. And I went to go get them. And she said, you know what, you can just take them with you. And I said, are you kicking me out of the house? And she said, yeah, because... You want him to be safe. So it's stuff like that as an adult, like, Mom, I'm trying to, I'm trying to better our relationship. I want you to be there for the grandchildren. I'm trying to become a better person. And you agree to do these things. And it, and then you change your mind. And then she puts it back on me. She said, well, you, you were held to raise. And I'm like, Mom, I didn't know how to articulate that I was molested. So I did act out. And I didn't know what to do. So it's kind of like that, like, I feel like the way she interact with my children is because of the things that I had no control over when I was a child. And so that's kind of like, I guess, no, because it's like, you try, in my head, I'm like, you're trying to fault me for something I couldn't control and as an adult. So it's just really toxic, to be honest. With you. When you ask me that, it's really toxic, and clearly I haven't. Because I think if you forgive somebody, it doesn't matter if they keep doing something. Um, you still, I just really heard about it because, like, he's my own parent. And I just don't understand. Like, I need my mom. And I understand, like, she had um, some trouble raising me. And then not too long after I went to foster care, my dad, you know, passed away. But it's just like I need her. And, she, and, she, and I know she knows that, but she just pushes me away. I know she has her own issues with her family turning their back on her. And it's just like, God, I'm, I'm doing what you tell me to do. I just need you to fix this. Because I don't want our, like, our relationship to continue to be strained. I want her to have a relationship with her grandchildren. My, my children don't care for my mom. They don't want to be around her because she's mean. And my grandmother died alone, and I don't want that for my mom. So I guess, no, I still have some more work to do with that. Okay, and then, Brittany, you you got to understand, honey, um, 
it's nothing wrong with the desires that you have, but it's God that's going to bring them to pass. It, you, you, you can't make it happen because it's going to be, it has to be a heart thing, and only God can change our heart. See, sometimes we think separation is bad. Sometimes we think that, oh, well, if I don't, if we don't have this relationship now, then it's going to be too late and I don't want this and want, but honey, sometimes separation is good. Sometimes it is. I told my son the truth. I told him what God told me to tell him. And he don't talk to me. It's been years. But I have peace about it. You know why? Because I know I did what God said. And I, I can't I can't not do what God say do just because you don't like it and you're gonna get mad and, and do whatever. I've never even met his two of his children because they were born after I moved to Florida. And he's been to Florida with his family on vacation. Never came by my house. But I have peace. You know why? Because I know what God said. I'm not worried about my eyes closing before he reconciles with me. I'm not worried about my eyes closing before I meet my grandchildren. They know I'm I'm alive because I'm always sending them uh, 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 toys and stuff, gifts for their birthday, Christmas, and stuff like that. So they know I'm alive. And I have FaceTime with them, but as far as actually meeting them in person, I have not. So I have peace because my peace comes from God. He's already spoken concerning the situation. And I had a dream uh, not long ago that was so real <clears throat> that my son, you know, reconciled with me. And it was so real. I had to think, well, did we really talk or what? So my peace, your peace is going to come from God because the things that your mom had to deal with in her childhood is why she's the way that she is. So when you put your face on her face and begin to intercede from her for her out of compassion, then God is going to be able to move in the situation like never before. You can't you you can't get what you need from her right now until God works on her. And while you praying for her from a place of compassion, for God to heal her wounds, for God to uh, 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 to to restore her, then He's gonna work in you because you're gonna see things different. And it's no longer going to be, you know, what you so much what you need from her, but what God has put in you to give her. That's going to help her. So I pray. Do y'all live together? No, ma'am. Okay, so I pray that, it, like I say, it's nothing wrong with what you want. It's nothing wrong with desiring a relationship with your mother. But you cannot let that be so important to you that it just keeps you turning, turning, turning. Give it to God and watch him work it out. Pray for her that God will heal her and make her whole. Because she cannot be a mother as long as that little girl in her is still wounded. And that's what's wrong with her. She don't want to be that way. But that's the only way she know to be. Because she's still broken. She's still wounded. She's still hurting. So for a hurt person to try to get a, a healed relationship from a hurt person 
That's just not going to work. And trust me when I tell you, God has put some things on the inside of you that's going to really help her. But you got to you got to pray from a a a place look at your mother and and pray for her. If she was somebody that you did not know. And God showed you uh, uh told you that look, this person is wounded. I need you to intercede on their behalf so for me for them to open up so I can heal them. How would you pray for them and pray for your mother like that and watch God work? Then it'll be a a a, a twofold thing. She'll get what she needs, and then you'll be able to get what you need. But she really needs you right now to intercede for her. She may never ask you, but that's really what she needs. And while you're praying, Go on. Don't try to move. Go ahead and move. Don't try to go back to school. Go on back to school. God will have, he has, a, your mom is not the only one that can watch your kid. As you obey God, he's going to place somebody that won't mess with, molest your kids, won't mistreat your kids, but they'll take care of your kids. So trust him. He know what he's doing. Because he, he he really wants to work, but he has to be invited in in such a way that uh, he can work. Intercede for your mother and watch God move on your behalf. God, God is, he's already working. He's not working the way you want it done because he wants to do it for good. He needs to heal her because she's broken. Let, let me let me share this with you. I know we've been on here for a minute, but um, let me share this with you. <clears throat> because I was molested as a little girl, and I didn't even know that this was an issue. My children knew that it was an issue, and they was asking other people. They didn't ask me. They asked other people. What happened to our mama? Why is she like that? So from that molestation, and I know it's a, it, 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 when somebody mess with you inappropriately, there's an impartation that takes place. Either you become promiscuous or you it, it come out in promiscuity or sometimes the molester become a molester. It, it's going to manifest some kind of way. So I became very promiscuous. So when I had my children, as long as they were babies, <clears throat> I would love on them, kiss on them. But once they reached a certain age, I would no longer hug them or kiss them. It made me feel dirty. Didn't know this was from what happened to me in my childhood. So they asked one of my sisters, what happened to mama when she was because she used to, when we were little, she hug on us. But then as we got older, she wouldn't hug on us. So when she brought it to me, I got to thinking about it. I said, well, you know, they right. And I took it to God. I said, well, why is this? And he said, this is because of what happened to you. Even though you were a little girl, you never wanted to be a molester. So it, it that's why you wouldn't kiss on your children because it made you feel like what happened to you. But I had to go to God and let him work in me to heal me of that. And my children are in their 30s. And, and, and then my younger children, when I'm home, we have devotion. Every morning we hug. And I kiss them before we go our separate ways. But only God can do that. I, I pray you, you're hearing what the Spirit is trying to say to you. I dealt with them based on issues that happened to me that I didn't even know was a problem. And I'm, trying, I'm telling you, this is what's happening to your mom. But your prayer of your prayers of intercession 
is going to bring her out. Then you all will have a, 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 a beautiful relationship. You know the song that you usually save it for Christmas about Mary, did you know? That the child that 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 you birthed was actually you birthed that child for your deliverance. That's pretty much what it's saying. Mary, did you know that that this child that you birthed that God would then in turn use this child to bring deliverance to you? Brittany, did you know that God ordained it? For you to, to stand in the gap for deliverance to come to your mother? Because I'm telling you, he has a plan. And he want to use you to bring his plan about. And then you will have the mother that you always desired. But she's broken now. And she needs you to war on her behalf. And Father, I, I thank you and I praise you. And Holy Spirit, I pray that Brittany allow you to minister to her and 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 show her, give her understanding, enlighten her understanding, God, that she'll understand the words that were spoken to her. And begin to intercede for her mother from a place of compassion, God. That you will deliver her mother, God, and restore their, give them, not restore, but give them a relationship, a true mother and daughter relationship to where they will truly walk in love toward one another. In Jesus' name, it, I thank you, God, that you are working and you are moving now. It's done in Jesus' name. Be obedient, Brittany. Obedient brings understanding because truly God is working on your behalf. God bless you all, and I thank you all for tuning in today, and I pray that you all come back tomorrow to receive what you need from the Lord. Come with praise on your lips and a heart filled with joy, and watch God move for